Hello folks. Welcome. How you all doing? Let's have a look. Wonderful. It's good to see you all here. Hello Robin. Hello Alex. Hello Simon. So what are we doing uh, today? Well, uh, today we're continuing our... Hello Julia. Uh, we're continuing our um, investigation of what we're going to be doing in uh, 2022 as uh, musicians. Um, as ever, it's a very uncertain time, uh, given that everything that's going on in the world, but uncertainty is also quite exciting, uh, don't you think? Uh, it depends on what way you look at it. It also can be terribly tragic as well, but, uh, you know, uncertainty is definitely uh, exciting. Otherwise, why do we why do we go on uh, roller coasters and watch horror films and things like that? Although. I don't actually watch so many horror films myself. <laughs> I can't stand jump. It's, I don't mind anything. It's just the, the jumpiness that freaks me out. Anyway. Um, hello, Eddie. Hello, Steve. So we are um, going, I mean, this is a follow on from the previous uh, workshop, but you don't have to have attended the previous workshop this time uh, last week in order to get value from it. Um, I'm designing these workshops in that way that, so that they can be consumed separately, but also you'll get the most value if you actually go through them all. And they're all just one hour long. Um, I'm working very hard to make sure that they uh, stay that length. Apart from anything else, I have a uh, team meeting uh, after this uh, at my seven o'clock. So I do have to uh, leave uh, after an hour. So they're not going to be, you know, uh, marathon uh, long uh, events. So let's start by kind of very quickly catching up what we did in the last uh, workshop. Um, uh, you know, and for those who couldn't make the last workshop, essentially by answering this question in uh, the chat, you'll be getting basically uh, the idea and the stuff that you need to do uh, this session. So. Let me just, I've just changed it around so I can move behind my presentation here. How cool is that? All right, so in the chat right now, what is the uh, biggest dream you could imagine for your music in your life? Now, I, uh, after the last uh, workshop, actually, let me move my mic. After the last workshop, I did uh, miss a few questions, and one of them was, uh, because when we were talking about this kind of thing last time, I was picking up uh, on some people who were making very realistic, you know, who were doing very realistic things in that, you know, when I was asking them about music mindset and money and what they wanted to achieve. And people were putting very kind of realistic sort of I can achieve this goal type things in there. And um, I did notice some questions, which I didn't actually notice while I was doing the um uh, live stream, uh, and they were very valid questions and good questions. Is that what's wrong with smaller goals? Well, there's nothing wrong with smaller goals. It's just that's not what I was asking you to do. <laughs> it's like saying, you know, I'm going to go uh, to uh, McDonald's and have a salad. <laughs> it's like I'm not. I, I don't go to McDonald's to have a salad. All right. Uh, so like. By making the small goals, you are having a salad from McDonald's. Not that you necessarily go to McDonald's, but 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 you know what I mean. They call it Macca's over here. It's a, it's a different name that you use. Anyway, so that I was asking you to make impossible goals. So that what was what was wrong with it? it was you simply people who were doing that weren't following the instructions. So there's nothing. I mean, having said that, I do think there is a problem in general with. Um, is uh, there in general there is a problem with realistic goals in that if you're talking about the long term uh they can they can become a prison and really a goal is not real it, a goal is your imagination um and the great thing about your imagination is that you can use your mind to do all kinds of things yeah we, i mean yeah, you know, we're already limited by physical uh, reality, whereas our mind isn't limited by physical reality. So if we use our mind in terms of 
you know, playing around with goals and things. We can do all kinds of things with our mind to get clearer on certain things. So for instance, the reason that I was asking you to come up with things that you really, really want that don't defy the laws of physics, but which, you know, which if you had unlimited resources and you couldn't fail, you would want. What that does is it gets to, a, you know, without fear, you had no fear, it gets to a kind of pure, okay, so this is what I want in an ideal world if I could have anything. And you are allowed to ask that. If you want to create the most value for other people in the world, first figure out what it is you want. Trust me on that, it, it really does work, okay? So, so by using these kinds of exercises, they're like kind of thought experiment exercises to actually figure out what we want. Then we can decide what steps we need to take, which is where we get to the realism bit. So if you were wondering, like, well, what's wrong with uh, imaginary goals? Well, I didn't ask you to make, uh, sorry, no, what's wrong with imaginary goals? What's wrong with realistic goals? There's nothing really wrong with them it's just I wasn't asking you to do that for, for you know, uh, for uh, reasons. You know? This isn't the right, what I'm asking you to do here isn't the right thing to do. It's a process, a method for figuring out what the right thing is to do. Okay, so let's have a read of some of these imaginary dream goals. Um, Mr. Mojo, one billion, billion dollars creating music. <laughs> uh, Ezra, millions of people will enjoy listening to my music. Brilliant. Ricardo Santos, changing the music landscape as much as the Beatles did. Wonderful. Uh, Brian, writes songs as influential as Bob Dylan. Brilliant. Simon, get big enough to be able to turn down big name remix work. Now, Simon, that seems like a, a very realistic goal rather than an imaginary one. M might not be, though. I'm just... Just checking. Um, Villa, um, hello. Uh, uh, blast from the past. Writing and producing top one track in Korean market. I remember Villa, I think you might have been in the first class of Start Now, Finish Fast. Wow. Um, Johnny, making a comfortable and uh, enjoyable living from releasing and producing music. Fantastic. Uh, Costals, making one million a year just for making music. Millions. Lions to have a world number one hit song and with an Ivor and Novello award for it. Brilliant. But my music is received with great joy by the world and I can live by making music and DJ bookings at great places. Fantastic. Dennis, performance at Circle, probably in a hot air balloon or you know, on the, you know, being airlifted, uh, I don't know, dropped out of a plane from, from the like, Grand Canyon or something, no doubt. Um, Robin, Spawn. An original music genre. Fabulous. Um, Simon, number one in Beatport chart. Did you, did you know I had a number one in the Beatport chart? It was a long time ago, <laughs> but I did. Well, it was actually, I did a remix. It's a remix of, who was it? I can't remember, but I remember Josh Wick got in touch with me and said, that's great. Kavoke, uh, to make music of a standard that people enjoy listening to and keep listening to long after I'm gone. Brilliant. Okay, excellent. So looking at that right now, the next step is to do something that I think a lot of people avoid, and that is to think about the problems. Now, I had a bit of a, a, a kind of insight this week, um, which I think is very relevant to music makers, particularly in the modern world. And that is written, where is it? Up here, yeah. Um, let me just stand in front of this. How do I do that? Like that, yeah. So this bit up here. A solution without a problem is a distraction. Now, I've always wondered how I can explain to people why when I say watching tutorials mindlessly is a waste of time and they come back to me and they say yeah but I learned this and I learned that and I learned the other and I've always I've never been able to clearly articulate in one sentence why I'm saying they they they, they could do something better 
and it is articulated in this statement. A solution without a problem is a distraction because it could be said that learning something is a good thing, yeah, anything, right? But in a world where you can literally learn an infinite number of things for the rest of your life and still have only scratched the surface, that strategy is not optimal to say the least, right? How do you decide what you need to learn? How you decide what you need to learn or do, right? How you decide that, well, one of the ways you decide that, in fact, one of the best ways you can decide that is by actually focusing on what problems you are trying to solve. Because I could literally do nothing and only watch, in fact, a lot of people do this, only watch tutorials. I could do nothing and only buy gear, all of which could solve problems, right? But not solve any problems. I will just be. Well, it's good. I'm. I'm. I, when I'm ready, I will start solving problems. Right. So, in other words, if you start with the problem, yeah. And how do you get a problem? Well, by figuring out what you want. Right now, how do I get there? Right now, I've got the problems. If you start with the problem, now you have a a path. Right, I've got to solve this problem. Then I've got to solve that problem. Then I've got to solve the other problem. So in that context, learning or, or being taught, uh, because learning is actually doing, but, but, but being taught something, yeah, to, to shorten the, the journey to solving that problem or buying something which maybe solves the problem, well, that is okay now. Yeah, but in, unless you are, so, this is a great way of thinking about it, unless you are solving a specific problem, don't buy it, don't watch it, okay? A problem that you actually have, yeah, not a problem that you might have at some point in the future. Okay, and we'll, we'll get to that. Um, so, uh, with that said, on paper or device, not in the chat, okay, list all of the problems which are standing between you and your imaginary dream music goal. And I'm going to give you 10 minutes to do this, okay? And I'll set a timer. List all the problems which are standing between you and your imaginary dream music goal. This can be big problems, it can be small problems, it can be kind of problem areas. List all of the problems which are standing between you and your dream music goal. And if you have any questions, please feel free to post in the chat. Okay, put these problems not in the chat, on a piece of paper or, or notes. And uh, get the jackets, not finishing enough music. So that, that problem, you can, if, you, if that's the only problem that you have, start um, breaking that problem down into smaller problems. I'm sure you have other problems between you and the goal, depending on what your, your uh, imaginary dream goal was.
As Jace is just saying, uh, some of these problems seem to feed off each other. That's absolutely um, right. But we're just writing all of the, the problems and figuring out how they all interrelate. So. Uh, yes, Robin, if uh, you have time, go as granular as you need to. Robin's asking, should we go really granular on these problems? If that is helpful, then do so. I mean, the more the more information you have about your problems, the better. So you can't really go, you can't do that, you can't do do much of this. Problem ID is really where the magic is at. See here at Make Music Your Life, we don't shy away from problems. We use both crazy, imaginary, uh, motivating. Tony Robbins style goals, and then we look at reality hard. Uh, Oral Circle says, my only problem is that the corona crisis has eaten my marketing budget. That is not your only problem. It can't be. That's simply impossible. It may well be um, a joke. <laughs> In which case, fine, but uh, it's not your only problem. Guaranteed. If it is, you've, that's a wonderful situation to be in. <laughs> Actually, I'm not sure about that. I, I really love problems. Problems are uh, problems are uh, what show us the way. If you're saying your only real problem is money, then that money thing is based upon other problems. You know, there are other problems behind that problem. Okay. It's, uh, it's, it's up to you uh, whether you enter into this or not. It's, 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 it's totally fine for you to... Uh, and uh, just, you know, ignore what I'm saying. It's fine. I mean, <clears throat> I presume that if money was your own problem, then your music is perfect. I'm guessing. Yeah, but what's the problem that money would solve? Money is a solution, not a problem. I mean, I know what you mean. <laughs> a lack of money is a problem, but money is the solution. So what is the problem that money would solve is the way to think about it.
Yeah, but money doesn't bring customers on its own, does it? Trust me, <laughs> I've tried that. You can't just throw money at a problem. Uh, so many businesses have failed, for instance, because they've been overinvested. They, they've had too much money. So not having enough money is just like it's just like not having enough time. It's actually a wonderful limitation in many ways, and that it causes you to get creative. So now. So uh, Nico saying time, we, uh, yeah, time, but, but, but time is a very vague statement, right? So a lack of time, again, time is a solution. So what is the problem that time would solve is the way to think about it. Okay, so let's have a look. In the chat, any insights about the uh, problems that you've been writing down? In the chat, any insights that you've been writing down? So, for instance, with Nico's, uh, who said time, which is essentially uh, money, absolutely, time and money are kind of different versions of the same thing, in a sense. Um, so, Nico said time, which is essentially uh, money. One of the things that um, you could uh, think about is what are all the things I need time for? Or what are the things I'm not doing that I need time for? So there's a whole list of problems. What are all the things I don't have that I think, I believe money would give me? Yeah, Because I don't think it's true to say that being able to have enough money for a marketing budget would solve all your problems. I mean, that's a, that's a, a distortion of uh, reality, for instance. Having all of the time in the world wouldn't solve all your problems either. So, and what are those problems anyway? Yeah, both time and money are solutions to other problems. Okay. Um, so, Jace said, um, Eric says, structure. Jace says, some of the problems might be solutions in disguise. Absolutely. That's, uh, it's very, it's actually, uh, uh, it takes training to actually be able to identify problems without them being actual solutions. Dennis, it is a focus issue. Um, again, I'm like the way that I look at problems is that there are always problems. There isn't just one problem. It's not just focus. Yeah? If you had all the focus in the world, you would still have problems. If we don't, I mean, if we don't have problems, then we don't, there's nothing to do. <laughs> Yep. Um, Johnny, finish better quality original music, create strange, strong. So, so Johnny, 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 you've just, well, actually maybe this is a, in, in response to a previous one, but I think if you're, if you're saying these things in um, terms of the problems, you've just given a list of solutions and you might be behind on the live stream, so I'm not sure. But if this is what your list of problems, finish better quality original music, create a strong social media presence and release on A-list labels, all of those are solutions. They're not problems. Okay. Jordan. Yeah, <laughs> I realized I wrote a lot of solutions, not problems. Well done, Jordan. Um, uh, Mr. Mojo, need a way to reach enough customers to pay me a billion dollars. So a way to reach enough customers isn't a problem. That's a solution. Um, time management and prioritizing. Once again, solutions. Eddie, fusing different ideas together is part of the dream, but sometimes causes confusion and ambiguity uh, in creating. Okay, so confusion and ambiguity in creating. Brilliant. Their problems. Need enough songs to reach enough customers. Once again, solutions. Being brave versus confident. Okay, so cue the turn up. Uh, uh, thank you for that. Again, both of those are solutions. It's amazing how we find it difficult to identify problems. Once you can clearly articulate a problem, and not having enough money is not clearly articulating a problem. 
or not having enough time is not clearly uh, articulating a problem or saying, I need to be more brave and confident. That's not clearly articulating a problem. Once you can cl clearly articulate a problem, you've got 80% of the way there. Okay. Um, so yeah, just think about before next time, the difference between problems and solutions and what is the actual problem here? Yeah. So if I, don't have enough focus, well, what is the problem that focus would solve? Well, what are the problems that focus would solve? Because the more that you actually get to the actual problem, you might realize that focus is simply one of many possible solutions. Yeah. For instance, money is one of many possible solutions to various different problems. Yeah. It's a good one. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> Uh, but it's only one of many possible uh, solutions. Again, Mr. Mojo, I need more customers. That's not a problem. That's a solution. So uh, yeah, just just really think about that. I think think this is this is may well be one of the reasons that you get frustrated because you're. I need a way to reach those customers. That's a solution. A way to reach more customers is a solution. Believing in myself is a solution. Focus is a solution. Adam, hello, Adam, getting distracted. Okay, there's a problem, right? I get distracted, yeah? I don't believe in myself as an artist, right? That's, those are problems, fantastic. Um, all right, let's keep going. Uh, and how do I do this? Oh, yes, so I've got a few too many screens. I'm doing things in a slightly different way than I usually do, which is why I'm looking over to this side and I haven't quite sorted myself out yet. So apologies about that. Um, all right. So let's move forward. So I've thought about, you know, various different def definitions of success, you know, to be rich, to be famous, certainly not my, uh, uh, my thing uh, at all. Um, you know, things like that. But actually, one of the things I've realized uh, after almost half a century of being on this planet, that one of the best definitions of success I can think of is that it's simply success is knowing what to do next. Because success is a process. It's not a destination, just like everything else. The universe is a process, yeah? not a place, right? So really what we want to be thinking about is what do we need to do next, okay? So what is looking through your list of uh, problems? And if you, only, if you only wrote one down, then you didn't do the exercise, which is fine. It's totally up to you. You can just uh, do what you want, but but if you only write one one down, you didn't do the exercise. Uh, so uh, yeah, you will have already have done this. But in your list of problems, I mean, when I do this exercise for this kind of thing, I like I could spend maybe twenty minutes, and I still would have more problems that I'd be identifying. Okay, um, and getting super clear on these problems is a game changer. Okay, so but right now, what? It's the highest prob uh, priority problem area for you to solve first, okay? And say it, state it as a problem, not a solution. If you're writing a solution, think, well, what's the problem that this solution would solve? Um, Robin asks, does that mean that failure is not knowing is not knowing what to do next? Uh, no. <laughs> so super Amundo, spend more time, maybe. That's a solution. No consistent output, Dennis. Great. That's a problem. Fantastic. But promoting again, no plan for promotion how to start and how to do with pleasure to hold, hold on consistent, constantly. Okay, so, um, Bart, how much, like, I'm not sure, how much music have you finished and released? Because if you're thinking about promotion before you're consistently releasing music, and I know that might seem like it's the wrong way around, uh, but it isn't. Like, you, you know, if you're, I mean, obviously, if you're releasing via another label, that's a different uh, matter. But if you're releasing on your own thing, then maybe, 
worrying about the promotion side of the releases, it comes a little later than actually getting them finished, definitely, of course, and just releasing them, right? Um, Ricardo, I don't have a consistent schedule. Brilliant, that is a problem. Jonah, not finishing enough high quality music. Brilliant, that's a problem. Frank, regular effort, that's a solution. Jace, not releasing with re regularity or speed. Brilliant, that's a problem. Um, Paul, uh, find a daily routine that works no matter what. Again, that's a solution. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? How difficult finding, you know, actually uh, clearly articulating problems is. So cue the turn up. If you added, I don't know what sound I am. Uh, so uh, cue the turn up said, what sound am I going to create? I don't know what sound I'm going to create. That would be a problem. Hamza, not releasing my music. Brilliant. Villa, pitch songs for the given leads. So that, again, is a solution. Okay, so Super El Mundo, let me help you out here. Super El Mundo says, getting to the quality level that's needed. That's still a solution. So how would you articulate that as a problem? How you would articulate that as a problem is my music isn't of high enough quality, right? Adam not finishing music. Brilliant. So next question. So there's something that I've noticed, uh, particularly in gear tutorials and gear demos, where it seems that people have um, appropriated a um, word, the word creativity, and turned it into something it does not mean, right? So they go, right, let's get creative. And then they start making weird noises. Cre be getting creative is not making weird noises. Again, that's solutions in search of a problem, yeah? Being creative is solving problems, preferably impossible ones, because that's more fun, right? Getting creative isn't making weird noises. That's, if anything, being non-creative, yeah? It's just randomly doing stuff for no particular reason. Unless, of course, you want a weird noise in order to solve a problem, in which case that's fine, yeah? So being creative is about solving problems. So what we're gonna do is that we're actually gonna create a specific problem for ourselves, a problem for ourselves by thinking of designing an if I had to thought experiment for the problem area you've identified. Okay? So, <clears throat> how it goes is this, and I'll give you an example of my um, one that I did uh, last year. Um, that worked really well for me. Um, so, but first, let me just uh, say what it is. So, if I had to insert an impossible task, and if I didn't insert awful outcome, what would I have to change and do differently? So, <clears throat> for instance, uh, like the one that I did was if I had to, and you, you may well have heard me talk about this last year, if I had to, release a track a day for the rest of my life. I only had one hour a day to do it and the quality had to improve. How would I do that? Yeah. Um, and oh, and, and the in, awful outcome was, and if I didn't, I would be immediately beheaded. <laughs> okay. So if I had to release a track a day for the rest of my life, I only had one hour a day to do it and the quality had to improve, what would I do differently? Yeah, and if I didn't, I was immediately beheaded, what would I do differently? That was my, uh, my example. Um, a good one, if you're, if you're thinking, if you're kind of zeroing in on, I haven't got the budget for something, might be, if I had to do 
like build my audience or promote my releases without any money. And if I didn't, I would be immediately beheaded <laughs> or whatever an awful outcome might be for you. How would I do that? Okay. Now, the reason that I'm asking you to create this kind of a thought experiment is that if you um, think through solving your problems within the boundaries of what you already know, you're going to end up um, kind of messing around at this, the, the, the sidelines and not actually solving the problem. What, what these kinds of thought experiments do is they completely break apart your, your thinking. Yeah. And uh, I mean, an example, as a result of that thought experiment question, which I asked obsessively, this was the year before last, so it was in 2020, in the second half of the year, I did start actually releasing a uh, track a week. And then what actually ended up happening is I ended up live streaming every single day, and I'm still doing it. So I've done a live, a live stream performance every day since March the 9th, uh, 2021. And it all came out of, and I'm really on a path now to finding who I am as an artist and doing all kinds, I'm mean, absolutely having the time of my life in terms of my music. And it's as a result of this thought experiment type of question. Yeah. So, so by asking yourself these impossible questions, what you end up doing is going outside the boundaries of the box that you're, the way that you've framed the problem, or even the, in fact, in most cases, the solution, the way that you frame these, these problems as solutions is creating the limitation. It's, it's creating the, uh, another problem. Okay. So by stepping outside that and thinking, thinking of something that is seemingly impossible, that doesn't make, you know, well, I don't even know, I, just, I don't know how I would do that. Yeah. It, it forces you to change your frame. Yeah, so for me, what ended up happening was that I massively simplified what I was doing, which then led me to actually realizing that I wanted to make music live. And in fact, that was my strength. It forced me to focus on what I had, not what I didn't. It forced me to actually recontextualize what making music meant even. It was like it literally upended everything and has allowed me to become much more of who I am, which is really a live performing musician more than a music producer, okay, which is, which is crazy. I, I spent most of my life trying to do something which isn't really, as, as a person, I'm, I do, I just, I'm best when I'm in air quotes, scare quotes on stage, okay? So, in the chat, what are your first, oh, sorry, in the chat, what are your first guesses for a possible thought experiment? In the chat, what are your first guesses for what you could do? And while I'm waiting, I'm going to see if I can get the chat to show up on the screen. I've been trying to add them and it's not been working for some reason. Oh, here they are. Now, what are your first guess? Yes, yeah, your first guess is for the thought experiment. The, the as if thought experiment. Oh, please feel free to steal mine, Jonah. Of course, you're, you're more than welcome. There we go. That's what was going on. Jonah says I might, oh, why does that keep coming down there? Hmm, unusual. So Bart says, release my music, find coaching and follow the advices for promoting to do it by myself. That's not, if I, it's not, it's not the, you've not done what I've asked here, which is, which is fine. Let me explain it. So 
if I had to, uh, like, let me give you an example. So you want to, um, you want to, uh, I'm not exactly sure what the, what, what the precise problem is, but you want to build an audience with your music. So actually, you could use mine. I mean, you could use mine. Right? Because it's essentially releasing the music is what will create the gap, which will lead to you figuring out what needs to be figured out. Okay? It's because it's, it wouldn't work for you to say, if I had to release my music, find coaching and follow the advices for the promoting to do it myself, and if I didn't, I would be immediately beheaded, how would I do that? It's not an as if thought experiment question because you can, you, you can do that anyway, right? So you need to find one. It's almost like a, a something that you can do yourself, yeah, that you can measure yourself, which would actually be impossible for you to do. We got any others coming through? Ricardo, if I had to write music for two hours every day at the same time, of day for maximum productivity else I would never be able to play guitar ever again then what would I have to change yep that works well done Ricardo let's try this one Frank if I had to release one track per week and if I didn't I feel like didn't have what it takes to be professional, then, yeah, so Frank, you've not really followed the terms, then I'd have to try and see it, try and see how it went. So that's not, that's not, um, so for, for number one, I didn't feel that like I didn't have what it takes. That's not like a gun to the head type thing. I mean, it could be for you, but what would you have to do to, to change? I mean, I think one track per week, by the sounds of it, isn't impossible enough. You're not breaking out of the bounds of what you think is possible. Yeah. Recognize with mine, you're, you're still being trapped by realistic. Yeah. And, you know, again, if you ask, well, why are we doing, well, you know, what's wrong with realistic? What's wrong with realistic is that I'm asking you to do something that is unrealistic. <laughs> so it's like, this is the exercise. This is the process. You know, this is how I'm helping you. By, by, tell it, by asking you to do something, right? So maybe change it to one track a day, yeah? Change it to something way more challenging, change the downside to something way more scary, yeah? And then say, well, how, what would I have to change in order to be able to do that thing, okay? Michael, if I had to release one uh, original track, mixed and mastered, uh, design and promo announcement a week, or else I would lose my apartment, what would I do differently? Brilliant. I like it. That's more like it. Um, for some reason, it's not. There we go. Dennis. If I had to release one track a week for the rest of my life with only one hour a day, and if I didn't, I would be kicked in the nuts. That's not that bad, is it? Well, I mean, it is. It's quite bad, but is it? it's not bad enough. Maybe, and if I didn't, I would. my nuts would be <laughs> removed. <laughs> How about that one? Uh, what would I have to change and do differently? Seems Everyone seems to be very, uh, very afraid of uh, saying uh, these awful things. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's just me. Maybe I've got something wrong with me. Um, I need extreme, I need extreme motivation in order to do anything. I'm just naturally lazy. Okay, so I think you're getting the idea. So again, what we're doing here is a specific process in order to unlock things in your mind. In order to really put your, to uh, use uh, Dennis's one, balls on the line, or if you don't have balls, you know, whatever else you want on the line, yeah? To, to, to really get you thinking, okay, so if I had to do this seemingly impossible thing, what would I have to change? 
I believe that when you're thinking about things like 2022 or, you know, next year or, or where do I want to go or how do I want to do this, it is a mistake to contract yourself into just doing things slightly better or solving the problems that you think you have. Yeah? You want to be more creative than that and explode the, yeah, at least just do this for some of the time, explode the frame. Yeah, just look at it in a completely, it's almost like go back to first principles. Yeah, well, what am I actually doing? What is the actual problem that I'm uh, solving? Um, let's just read out Robbins. If I had to gain 5,000 followers a month for the next year without dropping quality or increasing time, or I'd be eaten by a space seal, <laughs> what networks and tools should I be using? Mm, no. So if I had to gain 5,000 followers a month for next year without dropping quality, so those are, you're mixing many different things there. Yeah. I mean, that is, a sh I mean, you're assuming a bunch of things that, yeah. So, so it was like, also gaining 5,000 followers a month is a result of something, I mean, it's almost like something that you can't really control, okay? And then what networks and to tools should I be using isn't what would I have to change and do differently? Uh, the thing is, Robin, it's not about the networks and tools. You can do that on, on any network and any tool, yeah? So again, you're coming up with a, you're sort of thinking of uh, maybe you're, you're focusing in the wrong area, yeah? Because you could do that. People do do that on YouTube. They do that on, um, I can't think of any, now my mind's gone blank. Uh, Instagram, they do that on any, any number of things. And they, they, they use different tools. So it's not about the tools. It's about how you're using them, yeah? A bad workman, I'm not saying you're a bad workman, by the way, but a bad workman always blames his tools or lack of them. Okay, so... For next time, oh, I've changed the color. So for next time, we're actually going to use this uh, thought experiment to uh, to build our plan for 2022. Okay, so if you haven't watched the first workshop and where I give much more kind of color on these kind of impossible uh, goals, then please um, watch them. The links are in the description. Also, if you're just struggling to know what it is that you actually um, know what you're supposed to be doing or what you want or what you could do, then uh, do the scorecard because um, in the scorecard, that's also a link in the description, the scorecard actually gets you uh, focused on what you might uh, need to do, what you might want to do, um, because it's kind of, there are, there are essentially nine areas which uh, we've identified that if you were knocking out of the park on all of them, I can't see how you wouldn't be just generally knocking it out of the park uh, in terms of uh, music. Um, so, I saw a question somewhere. So VG Mr. Mojo says, you traded in turntables and laptop for keyboards. Um, no. If anything, uh, in my life, I traded in keyboards for um, turntables and laptop. Started piano at the age of uh, seven. And um, yeah, so I would say that the, the playing a piano of some kind or a keyboard is more me than the turntables. <laughs> Uh, and I, yeah, so I guess, I don't know, it depends wh at which point you're, you're talking about. <laughs> um, I probably did both at some point. Uh, I don't give mastering courses, no. Um, or all circle is asking. That's definitely not what you will find here. Um, not there's anything wrong with that. It's just, it's just not what I do. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have the uh, expertise in that area, to be honest. 
Uh, let's have a look. Any other questions? That's right, Brian. Castration is a big motivator. <laughs> so, um, let's have a look. Any other questions? Okay, so Katten has a good question. Well, it's kind of a good question. It's a good question in one way, and it's a bad question in another. And I, when I say it's a bad question, I don't, I'm not um, sort of uh, personalizing it to you, Katten. It's a, it, so where it's a bad question is that it's, or not a helpful question, that's probably a better way of putting it, is that to ask me, why are we struggling, Mike? There's a, there's a lot of assumptions based in that. Number one is that I know everything about you. Number two is that everybody on this call, or, you know, on this session is struggling. Yeah, I think some people, yeah, I mean, I mean, to be honest with you, in a sense, all of us are struggling. I'm struggling. Yeah, that's the human condition is to struggle. Okay, so, but it's almost like, why are we doing that? You're not, it, there's almost, it's almost like you're not and we are. Yeah, we all are. Yeah. And there's a, it almost seems that there's an assumption there that we're all struggling in the same way. We're all struggling at different things. And no matter how successful you are, how seemingly su successful, it's a weird word, but seemingly successful you are, we're all struggling. Yeah, that's, that, that, uh, that, that is it, yeah. Second thing, putting in the work, but nothing happens. It is not true to, that, that is a distortion of reality, Catalin. Is nothing happening, really? Nothing is happening. I mean, you're working. Sound is coming out of the speakers. Presumably, you are improving. Yeah. So what you're doing, I mean, just in that whole question, in multiple different areas, in multiple different areas, you're distorting reality. And that is leading to you thinking that everything, you know, presumably, if I'm getting this sense, that maybe you're inappropriately thinking that things are really terrible and not working out. Well, that isn't true. Yeah, things are moving forward if you just notice on certain things. Yeah, notice where there is progress first, yeah, and then focus on where the problems are to further progress. Okay. So MemJ asked a great question. Have I done this exercise for Zentor 2022? No, but I have done it for, um, I have, to, well, it's, it's a similar exercise. It's, this is a, sli a slightly shorter exercise than, than I've done. But I have done it for Make Music Your Life, but I do need to do it for uh, uh, Zentor as well. You're absolutely right. Thank you for reminding me, MJ. Joseph. Can you expound on live musician versus producer, especially in the wake of COVID? Um, okay, so Joseph, have you noticed by any chance what I am doing right now? You're right, I don't know whether you realize. You're not watching a video. You are watching somebody in Australia, and I don't know where you are, Joseph. You are watching somebody in Australia uh, who is possibly, I don't know, maybe 10 seconds ahead of you actually hear it, like the sound coming out of my mouth, going into the microphone through the magic of technology, going up into YouTube and coming out, that is happening essentially live. Okay, have I just answered your question? Uh, so yeah, so there's a difference between live in person in the same room and live because you're making it live. The other, the other thing where there's a difference is making live music, you can record it, right? So, so I could go into a studio and make my music live and record it, and then it would be a recording that didn't need to be consumed live. So I think there's a lot of, again, a lot of assumptions in that question, where when I say making music live, I'm saying, which means I want to travel the world and go to lots of, uh, playing lots of gigs. I'm not saying that. Um, the gigs that I want to play are this kind of live. Okay, and with the uh, oncoming uh, metaverse and uh, what's happening there, it's a very, very exciting time for people who want to do that. 
Ah. How do you become the best? By figuring out what the right things are to do, uh, excluding the wrong things, and then doing them over and over and over again. And as you're doing them over and over again, finding even more right things to do and removing even less wrong things to do. That's how you become the best. Basically using the process to figure out what to do and doing it and doing it and doing it and using the in there, ongoing like that. That's how you become the best. Not that I'm the best. <laughs> I'd like to be though. Um, Ricardo. Do you think having a way to dynamically input your ideas into a door, like a keyboard or a drum pad, is essential to making good music? No, I don't. Um, but I think it would be very helpful for almost anyone. I, th I think I think it's a it's a shortcut actually. It might not feel like it, but but it's a shortcut to lots and lots of things. Um, you definitely experience the music differently when I mean I do both. Okay, so I have done both. Um, and you definitely experience the music differently when you actually it goes straight from fingers to yeah the well, word straight from fingers to door. So, but no, I don't think it's essential to making good music. You know, uh, I you know Dead Mouse makes great music, and he he doesn't he doesn't play. Um, Oh yes, please give me a like. That would be wonderful. Uh, if you found this helpful in any way, please give me a like. That would be great. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to have to go. Um, but remember to come to the, uh, the next workshop next week where we'll be breaking down um, your, your uh, thought experiment into manageable uh, chunks. Um, and... Make sure that you've done the scorecard if you haven't already. Link in the description. If you haven't watched the first workshop, go and watch that. The link in the, is in the description for that um, as well. Um, so uh, it's been great to, to hang out, talk to you, talk about problems. Like really do think about, am I just talking about a solution here? Remember, a solution without a problem is a distraction. It's a great way of thinking about stuff. And don't be afraid of problems. Problems illuminate the way. Okay. And with that said, I'm going to love you and leave you and say onwards and onwards. <laughs>